Hi, this is Yasmin from Peel, and I am going to show you a quick video uh, explaining cohorts. What are cohorts and what is cohort analysis? To help with the memorization, we're going to go over three things. We're going to go over how to look at cohorts from left to right, up and down, and diagonally. It's like a dance move. So when you look at it like this, it actually makes a lot of sense and it's not as scary as it looks. Okay, I'm going to show you my screen. This is a cohort analysis chart. It allows us to see trends in behavior over time. Each row represents a cohort of users. Each column represents a month following the cohort's creation. Month one, or the first month, is actually the acquisition month. So in this case, this would be February 2021. This would be March 2021, April, May, June five months after February. And the values in the cells are the analysis you are computing. And in this case, this is looking at the average lifetime revenue. We also have tons of other analyses like repurchase rate, days since first order, number of orders per customer, lifetime value. And the cohort charts are all up the same. The value in the cell is just the analysis. Now let's talk about a cohort. A cohort is just a fancy name for a group. And in this case, in February 2021, 2,436 people made their first purchase ever with this brand. And now they will always be a part of that cohort. So every time that they come back and make another purchase, the analysis is going to be looking at how much they spent, how many orders they've made, how many customers have come back and at different time intervals, looking at the behavior of checking that cohort. Because maybe the time period of when they made their first purchase has something to do with their purchasing behavior. What Peel also has is the segmentation. So you can segment and understand, oh, did people that were acquired in February who bought a specific product spend differently than people who were acquired in March and bought that product? So there's an additional layer that you can add to this cohort analysis to really understand the specific purchasing behaviors and attributes of the people that you acquired. So this is how you read it. You read it left to right. And this looks at how is the cohort progressing over time? Are the values growing? In this case, they are. They went from $67.20 in that first acquisition month of the lifetime revenue for this analysis to $81.37. And then by the third month, so February, March, April. So by April, that cohort, their average lifetime revenue was $88, but they started at 67. So that's some good growth. So you can look at the behaviors. How are they progressing over time? Have they flattened out? Have they made more orders? All depends on the analysis you're looking at. And then the next thing you do is you look up and down. And this is that other dance movie you're talking about. So it's how are the cohorts comparing to one another? So as you can see here, February 2021 has a different acquisition amount than March 2021. So all these cohorts are different when you compare them at even the amount of customers that were acquired and made their first purchases to the analysis. So here the difference in average lifetime revenue between the May cohort and the June cohort is interesting. And same with it at the third month, like there's a difference here. And then at the six month mark, and looking at those behaviors is very interesting and can give a lot of insight. And the way you're probably like, well, what insight? And the insight could be lots of different things. How are you targeting the customers? What are the different dimensions of the behaviors in that cohort? Did these people that came in in June, were they promoted to a specific campaign? There's lots that we can break down on that. But just by looking at the cohorts, the way you read it, a cohort is a group. You read it left to right and then up and down to compare. And then the next way is to look diagonally. If you look diagonally, this essentially here, this is everybody that purchased in November. And these don't pop that much, but in some examples, depending on if you have a massive sale, you'll see specific periods of time like November, December, the holiday month, like pop out because all the customers that you previously acquired come back and buy again. And you see trends and behaviors based off of seasonality that cause different trends diagonally. So why are cohorts useful? They're useful because you can directly compare cohorts to one another by lining up the start date of each cohort and then the analysis at different month intervals. So you probably hear people ask, what is the lifetime value or the repurchasing behavior of people within 90 days? You would look at this and you can look to see is there differences between cohorts 
or what the average is or at the six month mark or the 12 month mark. So with cohort analysis, you're essentially able to compare different groups of customers to one another across different periods of time and purchasing patterns. And this is extremely important to identify and target problems and wins in the customer's lifetime. Customers can't escape cohorts, so you'll always be able to keep your eye on their purchasing patterns. And it helps you uncover the characteristics in your best and worst performing groups, aka cohorts of customers.